them as a group chief executive officer treasury consulting today my deliberations is not as a hedge fund manager rather as a llb student who would be covering the fin law by fin law i mean the financial market law i strongly feel that law is divided into two parts number 1 the substantive law which is also known as the penal law other is the executive law which is also known as procedural law you go to any country of the globe you have these two laws yes there are some enactments which are special in nature special codes are devised example in india we are having pmla prevention of money laundering act companies act 2013 ndps and variety of the respective section acts who are special acts i also divide the law into two parts one is the settled law which is completely settled in nature which means that over the period of the time the higher courts like honorable high courts honorable supreme court of india made catena of judgments and now it is completely settled in nature which is also known as precedent law and second is stat law stat means whatever is written in the stat which may or might not have subject to interpretation but there is one more law which we are having which is known as fin law fin law means financial law and now that law is actually divided into two parts and if you take my honest acknowledgement then this law is really really tricky and also highly technical in nature now let's move let's start with united states for a minute united states having securities and exchange commission they are having federal reserve they are having multiple bodies who are taking care of the financial market if you come to united kingdom you have fca financial conduct authority you have bank of england and you have variety of bodies who are controlling this if you come to singapore you have mas monetary authority of singapore and variety of regulatory bodies who are making sure that financial market regulatory should be followed appropriately now that's a completely separate thing that whether it is being followed the way it should have been that's a completely debatable matter right so we are keeping this aside in india also the count of the regulatory bodies are very high example you have securities and exchange board of india sebi you have reserve bank of india you have uh, multi commodity exchange variety of the regional exchanges you have many many regulatory bodies which you are having apart from that you are having institute of chartered accountant of india nfra and the list is really very very long but that's a separate fact whether india as a country is able to handle the you know frauds which are happening in the corporate sector that's a completely different ball game now in fin law one thing which is very important and essential to understand that you need to need have a very great understanding of the financial market because if you do not have a great understanding of the financial market and you are expecting your career in a fin law then you are taking a chance so let me let me give a very very reasonable example with regards to india we have securities and exchange board of india we have reserve bank of india we have institute of chartered accountant of india we have nfra shortly known as nafra 
we have sfio which is serious fraud investigation office we have companies law board we have ministry of corporate affairs and we have lot of regulatory bodies who are working in their domain just like insurance regulated irdai and variety of the respective regulators they are working in their domain but having said that if suppose you wanted to you are currently understanding the fin law about the you know i would say asset management companies amc asset management companies in india are divided into two categories number one the civs civ means you know uh, one is the civs which is collective investment vehicles while other is the aifs aifs means alternate investment fund while the former is completely open like if you go to mfi association of mutual fund of india website you would be able to track the holistic information about the mutual funds in india the complete information about the mutual funds is available on the association of mutual fund of fund of india rather if you go to the individual websites of you know uh, the suppose any amc icici potential cotec spi or any amc you would be able to get a very good hold of the data they are publishing the data research report their opinions everything in the in the public domain so we need to appreciate that the civ which is collective investment vehicles they are completely open in nature but having said that you can't give in guarantee that there is no fraud which is happening in the civ we have recently seen the franklin templeton mutual fund but we need to thank you to our beloved media because they you know they covered it in such a fantastic manner that majority of the people forget it about the franklin templeton mutual fund scandal rather on day to day basis i am also finding the advertisement which is being made by the franklin templeton in the public domain a majority of the people already forget it this franklin templeton scandal very recently we been through many scandals in the mutual fund india is known for front running india is known of round tripping and unfortunately when it comes to front running when it comes to round tripping we do not have the holistic literature in the public domain the reason being these all are very technical terms so example if i go with the pmla act which is prevention of money laundering act and in this prevention of money laundering act i am trying to search the definition of round tripping i am trying to search the definition of front running then honestly speaking it is very difficult rather impossible for me to have these information the interpretation of front running you know the uh, the arm to sting the wash sales the spoofing the shell companies the shelf companies and round tripping this is something not it explained thoroughly or in a detailed manner using variety of example by the regulatory bodies in india but if you wish to make your career in a fin law which is called financial law you need to understand that this cannot be an excuse so you cannot have an excuse that you cited a book of 5000 rupees 6000 rupees from the internet which is amongst the expensive books on a relevant topic you try to understand the, the gravity but you not been able to handle handle the gravity so this excuse cannot happen example theoretically speaking alternate investment funds are completely regulated in nature but the practical reality is that alternate investment fund is a opaque structure in india who are the investors how many investors how much corpus you know where you invested 
whether it's a listed scheme, whether it's an unlisted scheme, fund of funds, FOF structure in AIF, their uh, offshore parent. We have no information about that. Henceforth, one thing which we really need to understand that law is definitely you have criminal law, you have civil law, you have arbitrations, you have defamations, you have you know malicious prosecutions, you have variety of fields of the law, you have intellectual property right, you have trade acts, variety of information, variety of different kind of acts. But there is one more which is called fin law, and that to me, is more complicated. The reason being, the world is globalized. So today, without quoting any specific name, you know, majority of the foreign banks operate in India. And you know that they also operate in countries like Singapore. They also operate in countries like Mauritius. They operate countries like BVI, the tax havens. You know that. Henceforth, guys, if you are a law student who wish to enter in the world of fin law, who believe that probably in the later stages of your career, you wanted to enter into a domain which is relatively technical in nature, which is relatively uh, complicated in nature, which is very much interpretation issue, which is challenging, then definitely fin law is one of them. Having said that, high regards to the other acts which we are having. But you need to understand these things in detail. Another important thing before I wind up this video is the technological piece. And here, the things are much more complicated than what we are anticipating. Suppose you are a lawyer on behalf of AIF, Alternate Investment Fund Category 2 India, assuming. And they have a treasury management system, which is shortly known as TMS. How would you handle this case? First of all, you need to understand what is AIF. What is AIF Guidance 2012, amended, 2000, amended 2023? What are the various catches which we are having in AIF in India? Why AIF structures in India are considered as opaque? Why 6.24 trillion industry in, in India, AIF, Alternate Investment Fund, is considered opaque? And then another complexity which is called technology, called Treasury Management System. I strongly feel that the, the fin law is one of the most untouched area as far as the global legal system is concerned. Not specific to India as far as the global legal system is concerned. But having said that, a high level of complexity, technical skills and all these is required. This is Rahul Bagan from Treasury Consulting Group. You knew my personal number. Plus nine one nine eight double nine two four two nine seven eight. Let me repeat plus nine one nine eight double nine two four two nine seven eight.